for an engineer who wants to enter into the IT and also for an engineers who are already working since maybe five or six years or maybe more than that also. So this is the project which will work for all kinds of experiences. No matter whether you have eight years of experience, seven years of experience, but if you didn't get a chance to work on these kind of technologies, yes, you guys are welcome to this Java real-time project using microservices architecture and React.js. First, let me glance you through the program. Domain. Let us discuss about the project concept and let us study the existing system and let us go for the new system design. And also, as part of the study of the existing system, let's understand the existing system, existing system pitfalls and the existing system modules, modules, communication, problems, and all let us analyze and how those problems, pitfalls we can resolve using this microservices architecture is what we will see. First, let us see what is this project is, what kind of domain it is and all, what are the prerequisites, let us see first. Okay, so the project is uh, vShopify platform. The project name is vShopify platform. So when I say vShopify platform, going forward, uh, whatever the you know servers we're going to set up or whatever the um, load balancer we're going to set up, whatever the domain we're going to purchase or whatever the services. However, now let's go and then see the project. This project documentation I will provide once you guys will be enrolled for the project. Okay, so project name is vShopify platform, vShopify platform, and the project type is, it is a full stack development. So most of us know, right, the meaning of the full stack development. That means complete end-to-end -end development from the UI, user interfaces to the backend application development, meaning the UI, meaning the front-end application development and then the back-end application development. Both we will do here. That's how it is called as the full-stack development. So though it is a full-stack development, our focus mostly will be on the back-end side. So front-end side, we will use the React.js and that React.js from the scratch, I don't explain, but all the microservices we will integrate with the React.js. So that integrity logic, integration logics, and the React.js setup, React.js components, what we are gonna use, all those things you are gonna see here practically. But the React.js from scratch is not going to be covered here. And microservices from scratch is going to be covered here. But Spring Boot from scratch may not be going to be covered here. So I'll explain what is the prerequisite and all here. So project name is vShopify platform. Project type is full stack development. Duration is seven to five days. So here actual development duration will be the 60 days and plus 15 days is additionally required for us to do the production deployment. So how the production deployment will be? where we will maintain this production deployment, all those things we will see. And cloud platform, we will use the AWS. No matter whether you have the knowledge or experience on the AWS or not, here again, we're gonna cover the uh, few services which are required for us. I'll explain those services as well. Those services I'll again cover here. Okay, and timings from 8 p.m. to 9.15 p.m for uh, certain days, uh, maybe the time slot may gonna change a little bit here, 15 minutes uh, front or back, but 
the timings are constantly from 8 pm to 9 15 pm at least till this end of the demos and the domain is retail e-commerce so i have chosen the domain called retail e-commerce purposefully so there were various various applications uh, various domains but why i have chosen this retail e-commerce is this retail e-commerce business model is very easy to understand for the folks who are at the entry level and easy to un understand analyze the business scopes for the folks who are at the entry level and also for the folks who are working currently so here the end target is what you should have to get the hands-on experience on the microservices architectural model so to achieve that the business model should be as simple as you know easy to learn so that is the reason i have chosen here the retail e-commerce domain again i will explain what is this retail e-commerce domain what is retail sales what is e-commerce selling and how this retail e-commerce will be clubbed together and what are all the you know benefits that we will get with this retail e-commerce so domain about the domain analysis domain understanding again i will cover okay now technologies are frameworks we're going to use our spring boot 3.x microservices so backend development we will do using the spring boot 3.x microservices spring cloud docker aws wso2 and jdk 17.x so this is what the backend so when i say backend what i mean when i say backend what i mean is let me just uh, draw a diagram of course most of you guys might know this one but let me try to draw something <clears throat> yes yes i can showcase you the demo of what we're gonna building that is what the existing system understanding right so i can showcase the demo of it and you can see the uh you know the microservices what we're gonna build so these are the microservices what we're gonna build and you can see the existing system this is what the existing system and this existing system we're going to change into these microservices i will demonstrate this just be patient i'll demonstrate the existing system and also the system what we're gonna what we're gonna develop fine so first um just i would like to explain of course most of you guys might know but let me try to explain uh, the front end and then back end meaning what so here is the uh, assume the back end and here is the front end so always the front end is the application the customers will access so the customers are real users so whoever are there those real users will access this front end application so this front end application when the users will access this front end application So this front-end application will talk to this back-end services. Okay. So when I say back-end and when I say front-end, there were a different technical stack at the back-end side and different technical stack at the front-end side. So if you can see this architecture document, what we're going to implement. So these are all the front-end, maybe AngularJS, maybe React.js application, maybe a mobile application, or maybe a point of sale missions. When you go to demart or when you go to any shopping malls uh, like you know um uh, clothes stores or you know when you go to any 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 malls you can see these pos systems there so front end meaning any kind of an application where the end customers are directly accessing this and this front end will call this back end so back end meaning here we are developing the services which will provide the business data to this front-end application. So front-end application will stand in front of the users, real users, and get the data from the back-end services. So we have to do the work here and we have to do the work here. So doing work and then doing work, both the places is called as what the full stack development. 
So such a full stack development is this course is made for. But our focus is mainly on this back end one. And at this front end one, we're going to integrate these services with this front end application that is React.js application. But what is React.js? What is the architecture of the React.js? And what are the components in React.js? What are the services in React.js? Of course, maybe from the scratch, I may not cover, but while setting up the application, you may understand what is this React.js and how we're going to set up and how we can integrate with this microservices securely. Right? So that is what the front end and then the back end development meaning here. So back end development side, we're going to use the Spring Boot and then we're going to use the microservices architecture, of course, microservices. And then we're going to use the Spring Cloud components and we're going to use the databases. We're going to use the Docker and we're going to use the AWS platform to deploy these microservices, maybe as a containers or maybe a direct services, right? So entire infrastructure will be maintained in the AWS. You can see everywhere I mentioned AWS VPC, 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 right? That means AWS is the cloud platform we're going to use to maintain our application infrastructure and also to deploy our applications. So now you may not, now you may got the idea, right? About the front end and then the back end. So such a front end and then the back end development we will do in this program. That means the V Shopify platform, right? Um, okay, so technologies, we're gonna use Spring Boot, Tridotex, microservices, Spring Cloud, Docker, AWS. Again, in AWS, we're going to use the various services. I'll come to this point. And we're going to use this IAM, security, identity, and access management server called WSO2. And we're going to use the JDK. And also, we're going to use the Redis Cache. And we're going to use the Kafka. We're going to use the RabbitMQ. A lot of technical stack we have. I can showcase that maybe going forward sessions. So front end side, we are going to use the React.js 18.x and the React hooks concept with the Redux store. So where we will use this Redux store and uh, how we can use this React hooks and all. Once we start the integration, maybe, um, you know, once after this microservices development is completed, then we are going to come at the front end side and then we do the front end development. Of course, front end integration, I mean to say. Okay, what are the prerequisites? So the guys who are joining for this course, they must and should have the knowledge or experience on Java 8, Spring Core, Spring WebMVC, and optionally Spring Boot. If you don't have the experience or the knowledge on Spring Boot, that's okay, because we're gonna use the Spring Boot Tridatex here, so you can learn from here, but mandatorily, you guys should have the Java 8 and then Spring Core and Spring MVC knowledge. Of course, Spring MVC knowledge is also not required, but mandatorily you guys should have the Java 8 and then the Spring Core experience or the knowledge. This is mandatory skill set. If you don't know Spring Boot, don't worry. You will learn from here. From the very scratch, we're going to do this development. So you will learn from here. But in order to understand that Spring Boot components or Spring Boot uh, internal flow and all, injections and all, you need to know the Spring Core concepts first. Okay, so this is the prerequisite. And we're gonna do uh, as much as possible functional programming. So for that, you need to be aware of the Java 8 features and Lambda expressions, functional programming and streams, right? And other features. You must have to be aware of those features available in this Java 8. And Spring Boot 3.x onwards, we must have to use only JDK 17.x, if time permit, go and see the JDK 17.x architecture and JDK 17.x features as well, and then come back. So this is what the prerequisite to attend this program. Okay. So we're going to use JDK 17.x, but most of the, uh, you know, programming we will do both actually functional programming we will do, and then the non-functional programming we will do both we will do here. Okay, so just to go through the concepts and all, right? Fine. Um, okay. Um, 
and then very famous question again i am getting from the various attendees in the various you know uh, various my previous batches how many years of experience that we can put up once after we have completed this project i'm honestly saying if your experience support if your document support you can put how many of years of experience you want if you document if if your document support you can put seven years experience as well that that is what the knowledge you will gain in this project so but it is up to your document supporting you know how your documents will supports you and the various other factors also will be there right so but this project will be there for entry level to team lead level whoever have not get a chance to work on the technical stack of the microservices architecture so from the entry level engineer to team lead or maybe maybe higher level also who whoever have not got the chance to work on this this you know architecture they can also have attend this sessions in my previous um, batch around 7 uh, years 8 years of experience guys were joined and then they are continuously attending right so what my final final point is here this project will be helpful for all the levels of experience guys and how your documents will support you can showcase that much of experience in your resume fine okay so then let's go um, prerequisite maybe all are clear i believe now how i planned this program this program has been divided into a total eight sprints so eight sprints meaning each and every sprint is for one week here one week meaning monday to saturday initially maybe for initially 30 days then later sundays also i will take based on the need and based on the other parameters i will also take the sessions on sundays but mostly our classes from monday to saturday so that is what our sprint time is so there were total of eight sprints meaning eight weeks meaning 60 days of course 60 days meaning uh, eight weeks in the sense um around 8 6 of 48 48 to 50 days right but let us consider here eight sprints meaning uh, two months of time okay so forget about the holidays leaves and all so this let us consider eight weeks two months of time so in this first week will go for the infrastructure setup so what is there in infrastructure setup right so one week do we need to we need to really maintain or one week do we really need to spend for the infrastructure setup obviously because if this is what our production infrastructure setup and also our development infrastructure setup so first we have to create an account in the aws and we have to create the virtual private cloud in this virtual private cloud we need to take the availability zones and then we have to take the subnets public subnets and then the private subnets and then we have to configure the ec2 instances in the private subnet and then we have to configure the nat gateway then load balancer certificate manager amazon route 53 and simple email services maybe email services not covered but at least this certificate manager amazon route 53 and then the aws vpc and iam so these are all the concepts that we need to know and then we need to set it up so that is the reason one week is required for this infra setup so you can see here for the current running batch you can see this here so this is what the um Uh, you know two servers we we did the setup in the uh, we shopify platform vpc that means we have created our own vpc and there we have created the subnets we shopify private subnet series and as these are in the private subnets directly we can't access this we don't have the public ip address the only way we have to access this is with the load balancer so we have created the load balancer for this one and when there is a load balancer we can configure this load balancer with the route 53 so here we have configured the route 53 by purchasing the domain then we also have purchased one certificate 
and we have used the certificate manager aws certificate manager to issue the certificate and that certificate we have used with our um, servers now see these are https not http these are https so what did you understand from this one infrastructure setup have a lot of things to do so for that reason we need one week or maybe more than that also to have this infrastructure setup so as part of the infrastructure setup i will again detail you what we're going to set up and all right all what we're going to set up and all as part of the infrastructure what are all the services we're going to use from the aws in this infrastructure setup i will explain all those things maybe in the coming up sessions because in a single day we can't cover all those things right so this is the demo one only okay so if you attend the subsequent demos also you will get the more knowledge and then more concept fine and then the remaining six sprints is for the development and then the unit testing here in the unit testing development and then unit testing every developed component we should have to do a unit testing and we should have to perform the integration testing also and we have to generate the test reports because when we go to deploy these um, services in the real time uh, you know devops pipeline meaning the cacd pipeline then the um, vulnerability assessment tools were there like sonar cube so what they will do they will scan our code and then they will take the decision of promoting the build to the production or not for example we have written the test cases but test cases are failing more than 50 percentage then the CACD pipeline will reject our build. So to take the decisions whether the build is qualitative or not in future, while you know doing the you know deployments of these microservices, we must have to execute this unit test cases. So unit testing is a crucial part. What I mean to say is, unit testing is the quality of your build. Unit testing is a decision maker. Unit testing will decide the quality of your build. So qualitative build, qualitative microservices need to be go and then deploy in the production. In and here we also will use the Jakako plugin to generate the test reports, right? Surefire reports, test reports. Based on that, the build quality will get decides. And then the last one sprint is for the bug fixing and also for the maintenance. So here we need to do the bug fixing and then maintenance. So maintenance is what? Maybe we don't have the much maintenance, but mostly we will spend this bug, bug fixing also. We don't, we don't have, uh, you know, that much of liberty or the that much of time here. Um, meaning uh, what I mean to say is bug fixing and then maintenance phase we can cover for more in the development only. Maybe development is six sprints, I, I said, right? Maybe development may go for the seven sprints as well. But one sprint is for the infra setup. So this is what the plan. And um, next, what we're going to discuss is project concept, modules, and use cases discussion. Once after this infrastructure setup discussion is completed, then I'll discuss the project concept, modules, and use cases. Then understanding the functional requirements by analyzing the existing system. So if you can see, this is what the existing system. Let me showcase you the existing system. Existing system have a lot of uh, lot of pitfalls. Uh, maybe those pitfalls we need to uh, you know rectify uh, or we need to address those pitfalls in the microservices architecture so let me just log in into the existing system yeah existing system is like this so what are the users what are the categories what is brands products customers in order to understand the existing system i'm pretty sure you first need to understand the business model we are using the business model or the domain called retail e-commerce. First, you need to understand the retail e-commerce domain model. Then you will understand the existing system. Okay, so we will study the uh, we will study about this uh, domain retail e-commerce in detail. And then once you got that understanding, then we go for this existing system study. And existing system is like this, right? 
and our new system our new system should be like this let me showcase you the new system mm, probably just give me a moment let me go here our new system should be like this uh, just give me a moment let me try to go to the new system um, let me go to these wireframes for now i can showcase you the uh, new system wireframes wireframes in the sense the mockups so our new system should be like this this is what our new system is see how the uh, you know variation uh, between the new system and then the existing system it is very impressive attractive right and more graphical user interface or or the matrix are clearly visible ups and downs in the business growth are clearly visible but here it is little tough to understand the ups and downs of the business sales and all right so existing system we need to convert into this new system so what we need to take care while doing this conversion is what we going to discuss okay fine so this is what we gonna we should have to implement using the react js and then the existing system has been implemented using the jsps this is the jsps spring boot um spring boot and then the jsp is is what used in existing system what we need to convert it into the microservices architecture with the react js integration so that is what we need to achieve fine so that is the final goal existing system is called as the monolithic application which have a drawbacks and that monolithic application we need to convert into microservices where we will get the benefits for those drawbacks and if the architecture is microservices architecture then we required a ui framework and such a ui framework is what the react js is, is what we're going to use right perfect now let's go and then continue the program programming plan and all so understanding the project concepts modules use cases and discussion but before this you need to understand the domain retail e-commerce so the first priority for me is to make sure that you need to understand the domain because the interviewers will ask you the domain you know why you have chosen meaning wh what is this retail e-commerce is and how your application is you know getting benefited with this domain so understanding the domain is very very important understanding the domain retail e-commerce this is the first priority for us so once this is understand for you then let's go and then discuss the existing project or the project concepts what is this v shopify project is and all project concepts let us explain okay so I will give the time to ask you your questions and all. Please write your questions somewhere else. Definitely, I will give you the much time to ask your questions and then get them clarified. Because in the day one and then in the demo session, it is highly impossible for me also to cover all these things, right? So, but just let me give you the prior idea and then let me interact with you guys. Just wait for some time. Okay. So, after understanding the retail e commerce domain, then we will get some idea what is retail retail sales what is the retail stores what is the e-commerce sales and how the retail and then e-commerce sales got you know um, built together or, or how this together will help us uh, you know help the business so that that is what we need to understand then we will understand the our project concept we shopify platform project concept modules and then use cases Maybe interviewers, interviewer might ask you a question. There were a lot of you know, gained companies in re retail e-commerce like Amazon, Flipkart, maybe Mantra or, or maybe a lot of gained e-commerce applications were there. So what, what you are building, right? What you are building and, and how, how this retail e-commerce, what you are building is, is, you know, definitely will help your organization or maybe increase the sales or maybe increase the users though right now everyone is using the amazon flipkart and all right so what what specialty that you are doing here what is your project concept so that is what we're going to discuss project concepts 
modules and the use cases we're going to discuss. Then functional requirements and then the technical requirements and then the user interface requirements we're going to discuss. Then database design. In fact, database design is a concept of the um, microservices architectural pattern because we are going we are going with the microservices architecture. See in this in this architecture diagram, every microservice have its own database. So database per service pattern is what we have used here, like MySQL database, MongoDB, DocumentDB, again MySQL, maybe Postgres, maybe Oracle. So polyglot architecture is what we're going to use here. This is called as polyglot architecture. So that is where here we need to discuss in microservices, how you will do the database design. So very, very important concept and then important topic as well. So we'll discuss this database design. Maybe this database design we will discuss later in time, not, not after exactly this uh, requirement understanding. After the requirement understanding, we'll go with the project architecture design with the layers implementation using various architectural design patterns and then use case diagrams. So this is what one of the architecture, high level architecture is what I have drawn and low level architecture also we have to draw like each and every microservice contains what are the layers and each and every layer is coming up with what are the logics, validation logics, maybe exception handling logics or the business requirements logic, business logics, transactional logics, where, where we are writing all those things. So that is what the low level diagram, low level architecture. So low level architecture is what we're going to discuss first high level architecture. Then we're going to discuss the low level architecture. And then we, we will write the use case diagrams and as, and all, of course, use case diagrams nowadays, no one is doing, you know, it's, it's kind of wasting of the time, but at least the high level diagram and then the low level architectural diagrams are very much is required. Okay. And then after that, we are going to install the softwares required to go and then implement the system and then we will do the project setup and from there we will start admin home page design and etc so the modules we're going to start so total we have the uh you know eight modules but eight modules we we're we not going to cover eight modules hardly four modules we're going to cover and then rest of the four modules you guys have to do parallelly okay i will help you how to do and all so that's all from this project uh, you know, concept and all about these modules, module one, identity and access management, module two, category, product settings, customer, shopping cart, order management, payments, shipping and delivery, ratings and rewards management. So all these modules slowly I'll explain in our going forward demos. Okay. And one last thing I just want to grab your attention is whenever you're going to attend any interview nowadays, the interviewer is pretty much interested to know the following concepts. So the interviewer is definitely, you know, interested or, or he want to know from you about these concepts. In that, the first concept is the security. You can't escape. So definitely interviewer will ask the question on the security. Again, in security, you may think you may see a various security models like OAuth2 and JWT, or maybe you might have seen the SAML token, or maybe you can do the single sign-on using OAuth2, single sign-on using OAuth2 and using the SAML, like Salesforce integrations, you must have to do with the SAML. And then the social logins, like Facebook login, Gmail login and all, and then the multi-factor authentications like OTP based authentication or uh, you know, biometric based authentication and all. So this is what the interviewer is expecting from the security point of view. And then second, what is observability? When we are discussing about the microservices or when you go to interview with this microservices architecture, the interviewer will definitely want to know about the observability. That means tracing and then the tracking, tracing and then the tracking and then the logging. So these are all called as observability. Nowadays, the observability word became the buzzword in the microservices architecture. So everyone is 
definitely would like to have the observability in their project when the microservices are using. So if you don't know how are uh, you know microservices, but you don't know the microservices architecture project really, if you are attending the interviews, you may get the job because job requires getting the job is, you know, very easy nowadays. But the once you got the job without all these things, maybe once you go in, you definitely have to learn again these things. But however, so observability and then monitoring, observability, monitoring, and then resiliency, resiliency, and then the uh, cloud nativity, resiliency, cloud nativity. So these are all the five concepts. Nowadays, you attend any interview, you attend any interview. That means the any interview on the Spring Boot microservices without the questions on these five concepts, there will be no interview. There will be no interview without these five concepts. So how we will implement these five concepts and you know uh, what we're going to cover, especially the security. Most of the guys are lagging, lacking here because they don't know how to maintain the security and all. So what I mean to say is these five pillars of the microservices architecture were, were well covered in our you know, project implementations. So this is what I want to highlight um, you know, in this course, whatever I have designed. That's all for today, for this demo one. And you can ask your questions if you have any. You can unmute yourself and then you can uh, also Nancy, ask. Nancy, I have one question that ki, I don't have idea about, uh, I have only little idea about Spring MBC and I don't have idea about the Spring Boot microservices and rest of the things. Then it is okay, okay. to join? What I, what I said is, must have the knowledge or experience on Java 8 and then Spring Core. If don't know the Spring Boot, that is okay. Because we're going to do the Spring Boot development only. Meaning Spring Boot is what we're going to use for development of our microservices. So microservices from scratch, I will explain. But we will use Spring Boot here only. So Spring Boot, you will learn practically from this project uh, batch, meaning while we are doing the development. but Spring Core and then Java, it is mandatory. So you are mandatory. going to cover the Spring Boot from Sketch over here? No, I, I clearly mentioned Spring Boot 3.x separately, I am not going to take any classes. But Spring Boot 3.x is what we're going to use in our development. So ultimately, while we are doing our development, Spring Boot 3.x completely will be covered here. But I'm not you know, starting it, what is Spring Boot, what is Spring Boot Flow, you know, from the scratch, I'm not going to cover it. But the Spring Boot, all the concepts we will cover while we are doing the project. So that theory and all, you can refer any book or any material. Okay, practically, I'm going to cover the Spring Boot Theoretics. But microservices, again, from scratch, I will, I will discuss. What are microservices? First of all, what are RESTful services? Does all microservices are RESTful services or how to convert a RESTful services to a microservice? All these things, what is service-oriented architecture? What is monolithic architecture? What is microservices architecture? And you know all these concepts from the very scratch, I will discuss about this microservices architecture and Spring Cloud, Docker, and so on. These are also, but Spring Boot 3.x, theoretically, I'm not going to touch any point here. But practically, without the Spring Boot 3.x, we, we are not going to work on this concept. So Spring Boot 3.x is what we're going to use. Got it? Huh? Yeah. So, so sorry, got it. You... And another question is, Narsi, actually, I didn't have my personal laptop. Can I use a company laptop for practice? Uh, maybe that depends. Some, some companies may not you know bother about this. Maybe some companies are strict about this. Um, that's because, you know, we have to, we have to download few things. For example, ready slide is one tool we're going to download. So I probably tomorrow I'll cover what are all the tools. These are all the tools and then services we're going to use. So maybe we need to download few tools. So if your company allows, then that's okay. If your company laptop allows, if it doesn't allow, then it could be a problem. 
yeah. okay. high so, yep. uh, this AWS account, right? So do we really need to create by ourselves or this as part of training uh, those accounts we will receive? Okay. Okay. Uh, in general, in reality, the AWS accounts and all will be given by them, meaning the client will maintain. But this is what we are learning for our purpose. So we must have to create an account and then we must have to also bear some amount as well. Around, you know, 800 to 1000 rupees per month, you guys have to spend to learn, you know, this project and all with the AWS cloud platform with the real time, in, in the real time fashion. Must have, must have, because if you can see here, this WSO2 identity server I have, I, I have set up here. What I used here, I used the complete load balancers, Route 53, Certificate Manager, EC2 instances, and that EC2 instances I have not taken in the public subnet. I have taken in the private subnet. So that means a lot of infrastructural concerns components I have taken and then added. So those infrastructural components may get costed as well. That so will you, to be. You will help us, right, to purchase uh, uh -huh, and obviously, provisioning obviously how to set. Hmm. How to set it up and all, I will help. And how to create the account, how to create an account in AWS, how to access it, and what is what is each and every service. How to create, let's say, VPC, how to create that VPC. Each and every concept I'll explain. And I'll, I'll also give the executable document with the step-by-step -step screenshots. Okay. And the, <clears throat> this microservice when you are developing that, so what is the plan? Are you going to in the screen sharing, writing the code and showing us? Means how, how, ah, how correct. Are... From scratch. Yes. From scratch, I will do the development. Live coding. It is purely live coding. It is not like, you know, these are all the microservices I have developed just to go through the code. No, it is not like that. Again, I will do a live coding from scratch for all these things. And so this is line, already the plan why we are writing this code. Okay. So this is already the code that we have developed for the morning batch currently running it. Maybe in one or two weeks, it's going to end. So this is what the code from the very scratch we have. I mean, so, I have written and it. the timing, right? Let's assume uh, mm -hmm. we have some client call this time. Uh, so is it uh, how, how, how I will access that? Uh, is that a recording will be available in that? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Recordings will be available. Yeah. Once after the session is done, then the recording they may be upload, meaning the backend team will get upload the recordings maybe in the next. So there is no plan around night 10, 10 p.m. for this course. Uh, it's uh, 8 p.m. Uh, it's a uh, no, no, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. is the time. So okay. 8 p.m. to 9.15 is the standard time, at least for these demos. Okay. Then after the demos, maybe the based on the you know audience interest, based on the attendees interest, then I will decide the time. If sure. Meaning I'm okay to take it in the morning and then evening as well, but morning, at least for the coming two weeks. No, not, not morning, uh, night actually, I was thinking, but yeah, uh, 10 p.m. No, not morning, sir, actually I'm interested in evening because uh, in the last, actually, uh, I, I'm a student of your morning, I am a morning batch, but that time I could not attend uh, your classes. I am only going through your recorded lecture. I could not attend your classes because uh, my office timing is uh, nine o'clock, or sometimes mm. it shift to nine. Night to eight will eight be also. good. So I night not will attend. be good for everyone. I Sorry, yeah. Yeah. What yes. I'm saying, night uh, night will be good for everyone, right? Yeah. Uh, after, yes. after eight o'clock, uh, after in evening eight mm. o'clock, uh, it is very good for um, most of the people. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Right. That's true. Nowadays, everyone is going to offices, right? Maybe you know, right. in person attending. Yeah. Let Let us see that. Maybe uh, these demos let us conduct from eight to nine fifteen. If possible, let us shift it to eight thirty, eight thirty to nine thirty, or maybe nine yeah, to after, ten. After after yeah, nine to ten will be more good if it is doable. Nine to 10 or 10 to 11, whatever. Yeah. Uh, 10 to 11 yeah, is little, little time after 8 o'clock, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Let us plan. Sure. So, but this demo will be for you know, 8 to 9 p.m. only. After that, we'll one, take the decision. One question from my side. So, yes. Are we, are, we, are we going to deploy these things on Kubernetes clusters or will it up to we can end up with Docker? Docker Compose. This microservices architecture 
with this uh, React JS integration project. Mm -hmm. In this project, mm -hmm. um, we will do the dockerization of each and every microservice. And mm -hmm. also, we will write the, um, uh, you know, Sorry, your voice is breaking. Yes. We'll write the Docker Compose file for deploying this in the production, not Kubernetes. Kubernetes is not going to cover. Okay, what about Docker Swarm? Docker Swarm is also not going to cover because no one is nowadays using Docker Swarm. Rather, we're going to use the, um, of course, Docker Compose and Docker. Your mm, voice is breaking, I see. Once again. I'm going to cover only the Docker and then Docker come. Oh, okay. Hello, all. am I audible? Uh, yes, sir. no, it's audible. Am I audible? Uh, so, uh, yes, sir. it's audible. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Uh, so uh, this is actually I just uh, need the like uh, for the theoretical of Spring Boot and microservices. I'm not much aware about the Spring Core also. So are you going? Are you planning any uh, theoretical batch? In the recent uh... Uh, yeah yeah coming coming days maybe after uh, uh, two weeks mm -hmm. i'm going to start the spring boot microservices batch okay it, it will and be from they... spring core it will be uh, huh, start correct. From spring. okay okay because correct, i have not so I, from I the... just have the idea of uh, java 8 theoretical i have not mm. done the pra much practical also on java 8 and spring core i just have a theoretical it's just gone through it not much idea mm. so you will be starting okay. from the so will it be fine to jo uh, uh, join me this uh, real time project um in such case my yes. honest uh, suggestion is maybe mm. not correct um you have to first go through the spring core spring boot microservices that that one and then come to this project one because you know we're going to do a lot of uh, injection sometimes yeah. we're going to do the constructor injection sometimes we're going to do the uh, yeah. setter injections you know a lot of things a lot of spring core concepts we'll use here so okay. you, we we should have a primarily idea about them what is component what is service at least we should have some idea about it so okay may not be suggestible okay so your spring batch is starting Narsi? yes spring boot microservices batch is going to be start after two weeks uh, probably from the march uh, 20 onwards it is going to start and uh, uh, what will be the timing for that uh, morning only that will be in the morning only maybe 8 a.m to 9 a.m or 9 15 something like that uh, uh, sir, okay. please make it by so, nine actually i have a is being uh, another batch is 7 32 8 uh, 9 oh okay okay i think okay. you <laughs> yeah uh -huh. <laughs> and okay one more thing uh nasir this what or uh, in database right what are the technology we are going to use sql no sql so mysql and mongodb only or Correct. Some, uh, okay okay that is for now we're going to use for now we're going to use only two that is the MySQL and then the MongoDB. So oh. there is a brand service. Uh, I'll explain what is the use case and all. Here we're going to use the MongoDB and then rest all the cases we're going to use the MySQL and in one service we're going to use the PostgreSQL. So oh. that is the um, uh, the products product service or maybe the order service we're going to use the PostgreSQL. So I'll explain. I have a reason for that. Maybe this is not the right right time to discuss why I'm going for this, you know, various databases for the various services. I have a strong reason. When time comes, I'll explain. Okay. Uh, one, one more question University, from my side. Actually, yeah. I, I have a three years of experience, but I don't have interest in coding, much interest in coding. So is it okay to use to a year or should I move to a uh, DevOps side? <laughs> um that's uh, basically uh, nowadays what is happening you know the people are expecting meaning more demand for the people who came from the background of development to the devops side getting my point right so devops no, side uh, devops side the people who are there may not be the developers but if the devops guy may be a developer that guy will be the demanded one 
actually in last 3 years i am doing development but any how i can manage and also i change as such to organization in 3 years mm. the two organization i switch and also i am able to manage the uh, interview and i have to getting the offer i in this organization i got a six offer so i able to manage the offer and getting the job but uh, lack of interest and lack of inter- anything reason you can say that so i am not able to do, do well you can say that mm. so yeah. what i could do i will interrupt here even if you if you are becoming devops engineer na you still need to understand how microservices work and correct. how you have to deploy ui how back end interact with ui correct and other than that it will be very difficult even for devops guy these days very exactly difficult. true yeah exactly true that's where the cloud native everyone is now making the app application uh, app as a cloud native application so as he suggested though we are a devops engineer we must have an awareness on the microservices architecture how to deploy the microservices how to deploy this react application how to deploy the cache service how to deploy the iam service so we need to have this definitely background of all these things and nowadays uh, going forward maybe not now but down the line one one and a half year devsecops will get more boom devsecops will get more boom by the time if you have the security security knowledge as well or the security applications deployment knowledge as well then you will be the hot cake in the market got it uh? so to tell you just to tell you i was your student in that uh, like uh this of if i a uh, batch but uh, uh but uh, like when you explain 15 days that vpc how load balancer interact and everything because of that only i got another job and after <laughs> that not because i never got the chance to see in my company right because comp- uh, only devops engineers uh, see these things uh, but i explained that i work with devops people and uh, uh, i managed to get job so <laughs> the, yeah Great. actually next sir i was a student of, i i i also was a student of your uh, bsop by batch but uh, lack of interest you can say anything just uh, 50% i was in the sleeping mode aha uh-huh. <laughs> it was in the morning by 7 am batch hello oh, yeah hello yeah yeah hello yeah sir actually i want to ask one question uh, as you told ki after completing this course you can be you can become a team lead or uh, you can apply for a team lead or this type of things so i want to ask uh, can we become a solution architect after completing this course <laughs> no no uh, no no lalit actually my point here is my point here is once after you attend the session you become team lead mm-hmm. that is that is not to my word my word is what you know maybe you are a team lead but mm-hmm. you may not get the chance to work on all these technologies then okay. you can join for this course and then increase or maybe strengthen your skills that is what yeah, my point same same thing i want to ask for solution architect yeah. if someone if just just like me i am a solution mm-hmm. architect in my company mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then in this case uh, this course will help me as a solution architect 100% 100% because you know being a solution architect um, if you if you if you didn't get a chance so far uh, in in the end to end deployment of this microservices architectures and then the infra setup and all then mm-hmm. you can definitely join this because you know the infra set once after the infra setup is done then the microservices development and the latter the deployment of the microservices these three phases are very important for everyone if you are mm-hmm. a solution architect and you are now working as a solution architect but you didn't get a chance to see all these things maybe this is the definitely right right uh, batch for you i i suggest yes, actually uh, some time back before uh, for for five months back i was team lead and uh, java team lead and uh, mm-hmm. just for five five month back i came i come into the solution architect so i am getting some i am facing some issues i am facing some problems so i am asking oh, okay 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 maybe yeah, yeah that can i answer yeah. Asik, can i yeah. answer this question yeah yes yes yeah solution architect is uh, i mean it depends upon uh, the on the company to company and the environment to environment where you are working Mm-hmm. Uh, a solution architect for Java J two E deployment and DevOps perspective, I think this will be the right course up to this part. Yeah, definitely. About, I'm asking about this for Java yeah. and DevOps. 
yeah okay. devops but uh, yeah. if you go to, i mean uh, it all depends upon the what kind of uh, solution architect role you are playing suppose if they someone will expect uh, uh, a solution architect from uh, uh, integration point of view with uh, erps and infrastructure as well as uh, development this no 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 i'm not asking uh, regarding this yeah I'm yeah so it all depends upon uh, the role and development and uh, devops with aws i'm just yeah yeah Uh, yeah, that will be the, I think this will be the right course. I hope. Yeah. Hey, sir, in future, what will be uh, in the in the in the terms of pay scale? Uh, who will be better, DevOps and uh, cloud guys or the developer? <laughs> this this is typical question. <laughs> yeah, I will answer. I will answer, Narji. Both <laughs> will same in the future, I think. Yeah. Both if you don't mind, uh, can I answer this question? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, <laughs> I'm from uh, I'm from Canada, and uh, I'm living in North America from last couple of years. So, a JavaScript guy will get more uh, more package than any of these people. JavaScript. Yeah, only JavaScript. Nothing more than that. Okay, you mean to say Munstack, a uh, full stack developer in JavaScript? Ah, uh, maybe anything. If you know JavaScript, so that depends. That that depends yeah. actually. That, that depends on so in which region you are working and all. um but but you know de- compared to compared to developer billing a devops engineer billing is is more compared to compared to a developer billing devops engineer billing is more why because you know devops engineer is the guy who has to take care of the application as a baby when any situation any 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 circumstances the devops engineer should have to be respond so devops engineer's billing will be high compared to the developer's billing again ctc wise that's that's what the company's ratio so maybe they will they will give the good ctc and maybe may not but for the senior engineers or maybe senior profiles definitely devops engineer salary are more at least nowadays compared to the developers in the developers especially and sir yeah, who's, who's, who's whose work pressure is higher like developer because i'm not sure about uh, devops and cloud guy so how is the work uh, how is the work pressure in uh, devops and cloud uh, side pressure is how we will manage you know uh, maybe work pressure side I, i i may not comment because it is how we are managing and how the application state is based on those situations it will be but um in 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 few cases devops engineers should have to take more pressure than the developers because the developers job is done when the testers will you know uh, sign the build to the next environments so let's say development environment to qa and qa pass it then the developers can get relax because to move it into the production it may take a week or two weeks or a month by the time the developers may continue, you know they can happily go and then do the other development other use cases development but production something happened in the production or maybe the production deployments failed or maybe the you know production deployments need to be roll out or roll back so the the moment when the application is moving to the production that three four weeks or maybe the month the devops units will have a lot of pressure Mm-hmm. so uh, it is suggestible that as a developer you should learn uh, uh, devops side by side ma that is what nowadays nowadays everyone is expecting microservices architecture the knowledge and devops is expecting if if the devops is there then expecting the devsecops also security knowledge and also so they are expecting a lot actually and pay also giving like that in in us i have seen um, minimum they are paying 1.79 um 1.79 to 2.1 2.3 uh for the engineers who have the microservices architecture experience with the devops and then the security operations and all and for the architect profile i'm saying so max to max 2.4 2.3 also they are offering that is what okay. the market is. yeah okay. that all depends on nrc depends. i mean not yeah, everybody not everybody will get okay that's but the thing is that uh, yeah there are uh, all service oriented companies they are playing in a different uh, trick uh, they are giving the, yeah they are giving that packages once they joined the with the package and uh, they are saying after 6 months the uh, they are saying that the performance is not up to the mark and uh, uh-huh. now correct, correct. yeah yeah i mean uh, that's what i'm trying to say that uh, if you join in a product based company it will be entirely a different uh, so, uh, different scenario and if you join in a service oriented company like uh, 
TCS, Wipro, or Cogni, or any other uh, companies from India and on site, then it will be a different scenario. That's true. So these are all these are all definitely you know uh, under various circumstances, various situations. Uh, you know these will be you have not not on. standard or maybe not stable. <laughs> Fine. And sir, how See, to get, how to land job? Uh, how to how to get job in uh, UAE or UK or Canada from India? Is, is there any like path? Like honestly, I I'm I'm really unaware of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm not sure how we can. Probably, uh, if any any one of our folks were there, maybe you guys can have a discussion. But I think don't uh, don't, I don't think have... about uh, UAE jobs. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. the life there is a money, but uh, you won't be a personal life. You won't get any personal life. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Um, maybe I'm that's sure. a different concept. We may take it up in a you know. Different yes, uh, you were going to start a DevOps course also. Yes, yes. That is also because morning maybe two slots are going to empty by the March twenty. So one one slot for the DevOps and one slot for the Spring Boot microservices. So is it okay? I join both the classes this along with this this class. Yeah, yeah, that that's okay. That's up to you. Meaning, how you guys will manage the things is up to you because you know better. You know how you use your office and all the things. So no, that's okay. I can manage the office because seven a.m. to eight a.m. I can do the DevOps and along with the uh, microservices batch. Yeah, yeah, that's true. We, you can. Um, uh, hello, sir. I have one quick question. Uh, yeah, are you changing the batch timing or is it the same batch timing? Okay, so one thing is what. Uh, these demos eight to nine fifteen. Let us let us take eight to nine fifteen. At least four or five demos. After the demos, I came to know because right I, who are interested. Yeah, hmm. I prefer this timing only. So that's what I'm asking. Ha ha. That's what. If the majority of the people are interested to have the timings in between eight thirty to nine thirty or eight to nine thirty, based on this majority, I'll take the decision. But demos will be at least for the next four days will be on the eight to nine. Okay, you will okay. be providing the videos, right? Anyway. Ah, exactly. The videos will be provided. Every every video will be provided. Every day video will be provided. And sir, how long we will have the access of this video? Means like if I am uh, covering this spring code, which will be there, and so I will be not be understanding this video, miss this uh, this course completely or correctly. I mean to say, so how long we will have have the access to this video once the course yeah. get completed? Actually, let us yep. say the course is seventy-five days. Okay. But assume we have completed in eighty days. In the next eighty days, the access will be there. Okay. Next eighty days. So let's say this course completed in hundred days. So from that date, next hundred days, the access will be there. Okay. 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 Sir. And sir, in in that case, like after seventy-five, uh, in next eighty days, if I face any issue, anything, then I can mail you or something like that to get some ah, help. Exactly. Okay. If any issues anywhere, you 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 guys can mail me. Okay. Maybe a recording issue or anything. You you yeah. because we're gonna open one Telegram channel. Okay. You guys also ping me in that open Telegram channel. I'll I'll take it up. Meaning I'll forward it to the backend team usually who is doing all these things, and the issue will be rectified. Maybe it will it might take a little time, three to four hours of delay. You may expect, but it will get resolved. No, I mean to say technical issue. Like if I while following this uh, course, if ha, I get any technical issue. Then I can mm. just uh, get your help in that. Case. Correct, correct. Yes, yes, that's true. Uh, hello. Uh, yes. Like uh, here, I'm not having much exposure on front end or development. Uh, so do I need to learn from scratch React JS here, uh, or uh, can I continue uh, work on the on this project and simultaneously I can learn the React JS? Uh, yeah, that is up to you. Up, that is up to you guys. But my suggestion is what you know, yes. if there will be a provision. And if you have the time, please join React JS batch separately and continue parallelly. Because when we gonna start the integration, by that time you may also complete your React JS batch, and you will be aware of all the components like React component. There is a functional component, and then there is a programming component. Or there are various ways to coding it, the React JS application and all. So by that time you will easily understand the things and all. If you already have done the course by the time we start this integration, so that is what my suggestion. But if not, that is also fine. You guys can continue with this one, and then later, whenever you will get uh, time, you can go and then join. That that's up to you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's all from my side, folks, for today. Um. Thanks a lot for your 
time with me, uh, you know, demo one. So let's continue probably demo two tomorrow and demo three, demo four, demo five. Then I'll explain more about the application architecture and infra setup. So tomorrow let us discuss about the infra setup and I will showcase you AWS services, what we are doing, what we are going to set up, what services you have to learn uh, for this infra setup and all I'll explain tomorrow. Okay. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm just one question. Question. Yeah, please, please. Uh, so are you going to push uh, the code to get, I mean, uh, for reference, I mean, e yes, yes. So if you can see here, I am going to maintain this code in the GitLab, uh, GitLab. So GitLab yeah. access, uh, access, I will give. So see this, these are all in the GitLabs. So I will give the GitLab access. You guys can go and then take the code from the GitLab. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thanks a lot, folks. See you tomorrow you. at the same time. Thanks all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, all. Very good evening. Thanks for joining the demo too. Let me share my screen just in a moment of time. Yeah. So hope you guys are now able to see my screen, I believe. Let us continue. Uh, with the demo two, in demo one, just I I explained uh, the model of the program how we will execute, like the project name, V Shopify platform, and then it is a full stack development. Duration is seven five days, and platform is AWS Cloud Platform, and uh, the project is of type retail e-commerce, meaning that domain is of type retail e-commerce and then technologies we're going to use spring boot Tex, microservices spring cloud docker aws wso2 im jdk 17.x and redis cache lot more these are for namesake few we gonna use a lot of tools as well however i already have listed out the services and then the tools that we're gonna use I'll come to this 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 slide or this document, and front end we're going to use the React JS 18.x and React hooks and Redux store to store the tokens at the UI side, and prerequisite must have the experience or the knowledge on the Java 8, Spring Core, and optionally Spring Boot. So I explained about this program. This program is for 75 days where the beginning 60 days we'll do the development of course uh, the first week we'll do the infrastructure setup and from the second week onwards we'll do the development and that development till continues up to the six to seven weeks and then the last two weeks we're going to do the production deployment so today before understanding the further concept like understanding the domain retail e-commerce first let me explain the infrastructure setup in infrastructure setup i'm just setting you the expectation okay because why you have to join this course right you may have a lot of options in the market and you may have a lot of options also like udemy is there or other platforms are there then why you need to spend your time and then join here so to justify that, I'm trying to, you know, set up some bullet points and then, you know, I'm just trying to justify myself why should, you should have to take this course. So as part of that, first, let me explain you the infrastructure setup. And, and in that infrastructure setup, maybe you don't know what, what are those components and all what we're going to discuss now, but just listen about those components and have a have a just checklist you know um, what we're gonna do and are we really gonna do this in the real time or not so just have a checklist and of course i'm also explain or showcase you the existing setup what we already have done for the earlier batch so then let us go and then start understanding the domain called retail e-commerce from there let us derive through the project existing project existing application understanding and then deriving the project concept modules use cases functional requirements technical requirements and the user interfaces architecture 
all those things let us discuss. So first let us understand the infrastructure setup. So let me showcase you the infrastructure document. I believe you already have seen yesterday and uh, this is what the documentation, project documentation and lot more also. Um, I'll, I'll give this documentation to you once the once you have been enrolled for this course. Okay, so this is what our end product, uh, end product production architecture. So maybe by looking into it, you may not understand. Let me draw this production architecture or infra setup, not only in production, we also do this infra setup in our um, development environment as well. So better let me try to uh, draw that architecture one more time and then you will easily understand. Okay. So we are going to use the AWS cloud platform, first of all. So let us take this AWS cloud platform just in a moment of time. Uh, let me take uh, AWS cloud platform related. Yeah. So just let me take, these are our availability zones, not this one. Um, just let me go with this. Uh, not this one, not this one. I am trying to, you know, drawing the architecture things. So let me take one of this one. So this is what the AWS cloud, just as you, this is the AWS cloud. Uh, let me capture the AWS cloud image. Don't feel it as you know wasting your time, but you will get understanding uh, the production architecture and also the architecture, the development architecture, what we're going to use here as well. So both architectures you're going to understand. So this is what the AWS cloud platform. So when I say AWS cloud platform, you guys must have should have to know how to set up this AWS cloud platform, meaning how we can create an account. And then maybe most of you guys may know or may not know about this AWS. Don't worry, I'll explain while doing the setup, you guys can learn. So we're gonna take this AWS cloud platform and then create one user, one IAM user we're gonna create. Um, maybe the root user or platform user. So one of the IAM account we're going to create. So let's say this IAM account is nothing but um, vShopify admin. vShopify cloud admin. So this is the person who going to manage this, this entire cloud. So vShopify platform admin is the user that we're going to create. Then listen carefully. So here with this architecture, so far you just understood. Um, point number one, we're gonna cover IAM. So by this one, you just understood. We're gonna use the IAM. In this IAM, we're gonna create an administrator, an administrator user with the, with the administrator privileges. So we're going to create a user with the administrator privileges. Privileges meaning the permissions, roles, and all. Next is what? Here in AWS, there is a concept called virtual private cloud. So let me just try to log into this AWS, sign into the console. Let me showcase you. Let me log in with my AWS details. Yeah, as soon as I have been logged in. Yes. Yes, so let's go to the VPC, Virtual Private Cloud. By default, we will have one VPC. In AWS, by default, we'll have one VPC. But this VPC, we don't use because this is the Anyone who may be um, using the AWS account, 
there may be a chance of you know knowing our ip addresses and all because they can predict this cidr they can predict this cidr addresses or there will be not secure maybe it's not more secure so that is the reason we're going to create our own vpc we shopify platform vpc so that means we're going to use our own vpc so this is what our vpc okay so this is what our vpc is so we're going to create the vpc so once after we create vpc see this um this is the vpc we're going to create so if you can see this this vpc having the round table right and if we can go to this route table this route table have the routes and you can see these routes to the routes and then it also have the subnet associations subnet associations so let me go to again our vpc and route tables we shopify private route table private public route table so there will be two route tables public route table private route table each and every route table having the subnets you can see here so subnet associations one is the public subnet and then the second one is the private subnet so this is the private subnets so these subnets are associated to our vpc these subnets are associated to our vpc series we shopify platform vpc so what did you understand now this vpc is having one ip address so that ip address is 10.0.0.0/16 you can have any any ip ranges so we are just defining one ip range for this vpc so that within this ip range only the ip addresses can generate for the instances that we going to take like the machines servers whatever the servers we going to take in this vpc those servers will have this 10.0 as their ip address now if you can see there is one more 0.0, .0 is available so this 0 is what we will we will you know uh, use this 0 for the subnets so we will create now the subnets how many subnets will create will create the two subnets one is the private subnet second one is the public subnet so this is the so before creating this subnets first we will take the availability zone we will take the availability zone so when we are creating the vpc so here we have to give the vpc name and then the um cidrs and all and when we are creating this subnets we must have to choose the availability zones for example creating the subnet so what is the vpc and then what is the um subnet name and all we have to create but availability zone is what we must have to use so i am now in the mumbai region maybe you guys also can take the um hyderabad region as well so we are now in the ap south one region in ap south one region we will have the two availability zones ap south one a and then ap south one b so these are all the availability zones ap south one aj3 aj1 so availability zones is what we need to take so this is the diagram is showing the same so vpc and then in that vpc let us take the availability zones so first let me go and then take the availability zone Avail availability zone or aj in simple we can call them as aj so this is one availability zone minimum two availability zones is what we have to take minimum two availability zones is what we have to take so this is one availability zone and this is the another availability zone let's say ap south 1a and this is ap south 1b aj aj ap south 1a and this is aj aj 
uh, AP South 1B. Now, in this availability zones, we have to take the subnets. So, we have to take the public subnet and then the private subnet. So, this is the public subnet. One public subnet is in availability zone A and then another public subnet in the availability zone B. Similarly, we have to take the private subnet. I'll explain what is this public subnet, what is the private subnet. Just bear with me till I complete this design. So this is what the uh, private subnet. So in availability zone one, we should have to take the private subnet and here we should have to take the private subnet. So now why we are doing all these things? We are doing all these things to have the more security for our machines or the servers that we're going to take in our project. So this uh, public subnet one, maybe we are dividing the huge network into subnetworks. So those are all the subnets. So this is 10.0 and 24. And this is, uh, this is 20, let's say 20.0. So when 10.0.20, it is public subnet two. When 10.0.20, uh, 0.10 it is public subnet one what are these 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 uh, uh, you know 10.0 10 10.0.1 what are all these things later on time we are going to create the instances our ec2 instances for example see wso2 im server and see this um, redis cache server so if you can go here wso2 cache server redis cache server their IP addresses are see 10.0.30. So that means this is what the IP range of the private subnet one. So private subnet one IP range is 10.0.30. And then the another private subnet IP range is 10.0.40. So we are now, we, we have now uh, divided the outer huge network into subnetworks. Subnetworks. So this huge network we divided into subnetworks. Why? Why? Because security. Why? Because to have the more security for our machines, our servers, we're gonna set up in our in our cloud platform. Okay. Now the machines, whatever we're gonna create in this private subnet we'll get the ip ranges like 10.0.30 dot something see this 10.0.30.33 that means this wso2 im server we have taken in the private subnet one you can even take this one private subnet zero one similarly maybe the cache server we have taken this might also be in the private subnet one you can see private subnet one so that means, what did you understand from this one? Going forward, we will take the missions in these private subnets. Our servers will be in the private subnets. So what is the benefit of these private subnets? When the mission will be set up in the private subnet, that mission directly can't accessible from the network. Meaning, if you open this tab and then try to access it, we never access because these machines don't get the public IP address. So the machines servers we're gonna take or set up in the private subnets don't get this public IP addresses. As it don't have the public IP address, we can't access it. But, but how sir, without accessing, if tomorrow we want to set up something, how, how do we do that? Yes, so rather accessing with this private and then this public IP addresses, we will access it through the load balancers. So what we're going to do now, we will set up the load balancer. So that load balancer will come here. Let me take this uh, load balancer. This is the load balancer. We're going to do, we're going to take the, um, there are 
three load balancers, classic load balancer, network load balancer, application load balancer, and one more load balancer. We're going to take the network load balancer. Network load balancer is the layer four load balancer, which is very fast. When time comes, I'll explain. Don't worry about it in this moment. So classic load balancer, network load balancer, application load balancer, and one more load balancer is also there. Gateway load balancer. The total four load balancers we have. But I'm going to take the network load balancer because it is a layer four load balancer. What is this layer four load balancer, sir? All those things I'll explain later in time. So the load balancer is here. Load balancer is not in the VPC. So where is the load balancer for us here? Go to the CC2 instances. In earlier project, we have taken the load balancer. See, these are all the load balancers. We Shopify IAM server, we Shopify ready server, we have taken the load balancers in the availability zones. Sorry, in the same VPC, we have taken our vShopify platform VPC and in the, it is it is available in both the availability zones. That means this load balancer will be common, commonly available for this both two availability zones. Okay, it is now in our VPC. Okay, so then we're going to set up our servers, uh, our EC2 machines or the servers we're going to set up in our private subnets so this is one server and maybe we're going to take this is another server let's say this is the um i am server and this is the let's say redis cache redis server maybe we're going to take uh, another server uh, probably this is a docker server uh, this is a docker server Maybe this is a Docker server, right? And uh, maybe we're going to take other servers as well, like I am Redis, Docker, or maybe we're going to uh, take one other jump box. There is one machine called jump box. We will use this jump box. So these are all what the machines we're going to take in this private subnets. So when these machines will take in the private subnet, when these machines will be taken the private subnet, then these machines can't access from the outside. Outside in the sense, this is the AWS cloud, right? So the users are over the network. So the users are over the network. Maybe the users are here, or maybe users, you, me, we, we are here. So we are here. So what we're gonna do, we are trying to access the application via this load balancer over the network. So just give me a moment. Maybe this concept is little tough to understand at this moment, but you see, um, you have to justify yourself, right? Why I should have to join this course? Maybe I can get a better, better course anywhere. You go and then check or you know attend various demos. You will know the importance of what I'm, what I'm telling here. However, so users will access the application. The application will run here. Maybe here IAM will run. So let me take the IAM application. Like uh, this is what the IAM server. So this IAM server may be um, this IAM server may be running here, right? So the, here IAM server may be running. Here IAM server may be running, and uh, maybe here the Redis cache is running, right? So in order to access those applications, so maybe here the Redis cache is running. Just let me take in this diagram. Yeah, so in order to access these applications over the internet, meaning over the cloud, I mean to say. So here is the cloud. So this is what the cloud, right? So over the internet, when the users are trying to accessing our application, right? Then the, the, the users know the um, either load balancer URL or the users will know the, you know, the domain. So like, let us say, these guys will access our application. Uh, let me take it like this. Better let me take it like this. So these guys will access our application like this, uh, HTTPS, 
https colon slash slash i am dot v shopify dot v shopify dot app dot in or maybe v shopify dot in like this they will access the application so when they will access the application first it will go to the route 53 so we're going to use a service called route 53 so if first it will come to the service called the route 53 so before this route 53 even there is another service called certificate manager certificate manager so this certificate manager will validate the certificate because we are using https right so it will validate this certificate in the aws first it will validate by the certificate manager then the domain will be resolved by this route 53 then for this domain in the route 53 we will configure the load balancer so it will be reach out to load balancer so we can say um so probably i can take it like this uh just let me take it here now let me take this here okay so here what i'll do is i'll take the route 53 remember what are the services are covering for for us so one is im and second one is vpc and third one is the um third one is the load balancers load balancers and fourth one is the um route 53 and fifth one is the certificate manager so these are the services so far we have discussed right now when the call comes to this load balancer then the load balancer will have the target group target group of the ec2 instances so this load balancer is in now our vpc so it will easily group these instances and these instances each incoming request now will go to the gateway so if you can see here um if you can see here in the vpc structure let me again go to vpc there will be a uh, internet gateway so go to vpc and this is the vpc and our vpc will have the internet gateway so let's go to uh yeah so these are the subnets and this vpc have the internet gateway so main network acl this network acl have subnet so let's go to internet gateway so this is the v shopify platform internet gateway so this internet gateway attached to our vpc platform i'll explain the usage of this internet gateway maybe first let me draw the entire architecture then i'll explain so whatever the questions you are asking, difference between load balancer and API gateway, these are all in a single class we can't answer, right? But 100% there is a difference. So just, just, just wait till I complete this one, all your questions will get resolved. So first the call will come to this load balancer. Now load balancer will have the listen till end, then your questions will be resolved. Because while I'm discussing the topic, you are asking the questions which I'm going to discuss next. So again, if I jump there, it will be confusion for you. Let's just wait. So this is the load balancer we're going to create. And this load balancer have the, you know, group, network group, target servers group. So this is the target group. So the target group, carefully observe, the tar target group is... Of course, uh, the load balancer is in the VPC. So the target group is identifying the targets of our server, V Shopify IM server. Now these machines will get identified. So that means from here, from the load balancer, the machines are reachable. So from here, the, the machines from the load balancer, the machines, machines in the sense we should have to say, the network is the, the from this load balancer first is availability zone private subnet this is now reachable but directly directly it can't go here 
So one moment. So, but rather than directly going here, of course, it will identify, meaning the, the load balancer will identify the group of target servers, but there is a internet gateway. That internet gateway will do what? Internet gateway will allow the 